Spoiler alert! Are you ready for a behind the scenes look at the latest episode? Make sure you're all caught up on the new season of I Am Jazz. I need your opinion on something. You know how I've been stressing out because so many parents have been emailing me and texting me and Facebooking me. How's Jazz doing? What happened with Jazz's surgery? And little bits and pieces have snuck out about the fact that things didn't go according to plan. I really just want to get ahead of this so that there's no speculation. I think that the best way to do that is through a Facebook Live. We really wanted to have the Facebook Live to get ahead of the game in terms of the word getting out about Jazz's surgery and the complication. Some people had heard about it and there was speculation and almost rumors going on. We did the Facebook Live to discuss the situation with other families that have trans youth, not the trans youth, but their parents. And then somebody um, called in and did not quite understand what we were talking about. And they weren't 100% supportive of the situation, but I think after we explained to them exactly why we were doing what we were doing and what happened, they understood, I what hope, but they did, hung up. What word did they use? They said, it sounds mangled. That you were mangled. Yeah. Oh my God, mangled. I don't know why they said that word. I think they were just worried because you could look at this procedure and easily say, oh, you were botched. But it wasn't the doctor's fault. That isn't the case. It wasn't a botched procedure. It was they did everything they needed to do, and it was unfortunate that my body didn't hold up to the circumstances. Your body just wasn't healing the way it was supposed to. And yeah. that is something that happens to people, but yours, like, to that extent, it never happens. Yeah. What people don't know about that Facebook Live was that most of the people in that call were actually people that you knew from your support group and community. Yeah. I mean, we they were invited. They couldn't just join. Yeah, it was a I very private, you, private Facebook Live. You wanted Live. to connect with the people that you actually knew on a more personal basis or so that they weren't them. confused by this or mm -hmm. blindsided by the information. Yeah, we want to get the word out there before they watch it on the show. So I'm what you call a clairvoyant channel, and I channel Archangel Michael. So I'm hearing his voice, he's gonna tell me things, and I'm just gonna be the messenger. The first couple messages um, that I got for you, Jack, your guides are saying to me um, that you wanna know if you will move from your location um, where you're currently living. We have no such plans for any move. I think it's so awesome that Grandpa was going to a psychic because he's a doctor, he went to medical school, he is very empirical with his way of thinking, everything is scientific, numbers, data, facts, this and that. So going to something or someone like a psychic is so out of the blue for him and I know that he doesn't believe in that stuff. However, he was questioning you know, his own mortality and I wanted to maybe change his perspective, see if he could visit someone who doesn't believe in the idea of death and believes that we're all eternal and see if it could sway him a little bit and give him hope. I don't think it worked. <laughs> There's no way I would have ever been able to get my dad to go to a psychic. Yeah, he just loves you more than me. And for me, it was less about like trying to sway his opinion on this and more about just having a good experience because it was nice bonding time with him. I think it was something that he's never really done before, a new journey, and it was a lot of fun. Do you miss me? Um, yeah, I miss you. Okay. Well, I was checking other people out at different places and I wasn't really acting upon any impulses to speak to other people, but just the fact that my eyes were still open and that now that they I'm more confident. Open. Yeah, they were open. And now that I was more inclined to reach out to people because I'm more confident in myself and my body, I, I wanted to make that clear to Amir, and I think everyone offered great advice. I think you changed my mind the most because you talked about the different ice cream flavors, and that was the perfect analogy. And you were like, don't settle on one ice cream flavor, try different flavors before you figure out what you really like. And it's true, like my first relationship, I don't want it to be my last relationship. And I've said those words to Amir, like, 
I don't want to be one and done and settle. Like that's I not wanna, like I, you one and done. Yeah, no, it's not like anyone. But so your wild oats. But I also just didn't want to be preemptive about it and be like we're breaking up. So I just had to communicate with him how I was feeling and say like, look, this is where I'm at. We could continue moving forward, but know that I may explore with other people. And he had a choice. He could be like, I'm not into that, or I'll stick around. And mm -hmm. he's sticking around. So yeah, yeah it's his choice. I Am Jazz features open and honest discussions about LGBTQ plus issues. To learn how you could further these meaningful conversations with your loved ones, head to tlcme.com slash LGBTQ resources.